James Laxton is the cinematographer of that little darling indie movie that is now rocking the Oscar world. At Gold Derby, Moonlight is number four for best picture. Uh, your director uh, is in our best director lineup. We've got the actors in there. This is a, one of that, those little indies like Boyhood or Winter's Bone that uh, takes on the biggies at the Oscars, and it's this man's film. <laughs> so is the pressure the little, on? The little engine that could. <laughs> Uh, pressure's on, sure. Yeah, I like pressure. I well, set up the story. I was me. always that kid that was good at the test but didn't study. You know, so oh, I was, I'm good under pressure. It's part of the deal. This is the story of a boy who has literally everything going against him that he possibly could. Take it from there. Whew. Uh, and he does a good job with it? I don't know. Yeah. Um, no, it is. I mean, I think it's a story that we all relate to, right? right? I, mean, I think that we all, in our lives, find conflict and, and find hurdles to jump over. And, and, and the fil this film is a, about the process of coming over those hurdles. And, um, you know, and, and He's a fatherless boy in the uh, financially depressed neighborhood, uh, has a crack addicted single mom. Uh, he's wrestling with his own sexuality. Giving away all the secrets. Well, yeah, that's kind of established <laughs> in the first five minutes. <laughs> and then uh, you go on this journey where he, tr where he tries to find himself. Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's a tough film to describe because it's sort of about everything is about l small things. Uh, you know, I think that's something that I think Barry does a great job of uh, navigating that fine line of being universal, yet, yet being specific. And I think, you know, um, you know as, a, as, a, as the great director he is, he's able to sort of navigate that you know, efficiently and, 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 and uh, while evoking amazing sort of uh, emotions as well. Because you have these, um, these most of the movies is indoors and intimate scenes, but then you have these very powerful uh, vista scenes, like this, the, there's a swimming scene in the, in the film. I, we were talking before this, uh, and I think it's a really great example of, of, just a, of, of your role in this film, because not only is it one of the most uh, uh, signature shots of the whole film, and one of the most resonant emotionally, but was also the most challenging technically, right? A lot went yeah. wrong. Yeah, that was a day that was tough for us. Uh, I think we started that day um, assuming we'd have about six hours to shoot this swimming scene between um, uh, you know, this character Juan and, and the young character Chiron in, in, story, in the first story of the film. He's teaching the Yeah, the, the boy young boy how to teaches. swim in the ocean. And, um, and I think about an hour into the shooting this scene, we could look out over the, uh, you know, to the coast uh, 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 eastward and, and saw a massive storm approaching. And if anybody's been in Miami and spending time down there, you, you, you quickly realize weather changes very, very fast. And so we, we sort of realized, you know, Barry, the director's from Miami, you know, he realized, I think, pretty quickly, okay, we have about an, another 45 minutes or something to finish this scene. Uh, and so I think what you see there, if you see that, you can actually see the clouds come in over the course of the scene a little bit, and actually we made it work for us in an emotional, sort of tonal way. But everything you see in that scene is like in, a, in an hour and a half or so, which is tough because uh, you know um, we're also dealing with um, you know I'm, I'm holding this massive underwater camera and the tides are pulling me and pushing me and we're getting hit by waves and all these things and so uh, it's something I'm proud of um, uh, and I think you know it's it's one of those moments where the pressure's on and uh, the cast uh, you know really rallies the crew really, really rallies they know we need to make this happen in, in, a, in a finite amount of time and. Uh, you know, I think it's, it's a great example of, like, I think, what the process was like to make this film just generally. I mean, everybody sort of, you know, dug in and, and, and made it happen for us. What kind of crew did you have in a situation like this? I, I mean, the, the, the usuals. I mean, there's, a, there's you know, <laughs> the, the camera assistants, the grips, the electricians, the art department. I mean, everyone's there. The funny thing about doing, doing that scene specifically is you know, they're all on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> staying warm and dry and you know I'm out uh, in a wetsuit uh, you know with a couple water safety folks and 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 the cast um, so I guess it was a little lonely <laughs> I guess you could say it was actually a little lonely <laughs> there's another famous beach scene in this film that takes place at night under the moon as these mm. two boys kind of discover each other mm. uh, it's a very poignant scene I, I think it's probably most people would say the most powerful scene in the film. Talk about setting that up, because this is yeah. where the metaphor of moonlight becomes an actual visual image in the story. So that scene, uh, it's something I'm proud of. It, uh, it just, beach scenes, if anyone's ever tried to photograph a nighttime beach scene, it's a big challenge, because where does the light come from? Because in theory, there, it doesn't exist. In theory, 
uh, you know, it's, it's darkness. And, and the truth is, I went out in, in pre-production with Barry to sort of scout these locations, hoping you know, the nearby hotels and bars on Miami Beach would sort of have an ambient level that would be spilling out across the, the, the beach. And, and I'm looking at my meter thinking it's broken because it's showing nothing. And, <laughs> and I'm realizing I'm in, I'm in deep trouble. Um, uh, and I need to provide literally every bit of light that's in that scene uh, artificially. Yet it's also, like you said, a very important scene in the film, and, 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 and something that I was, you know, incredibly nervous about in pre-production. Yeah, you had to get this just right. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a very specific tone. The performances are fantastic in that scene, uh, and so there's there's a lot of variables, and um, and so we knew we you know we put you know a great deal of technical efforts and 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 and, and resources behind it. Um, uh, I'm not going to bore you with the details of what we did, but the point is. Uh, <laughs> You're here with a guild crowd, Sorry, kiddo. Yeah, they okay, want fine. to know those okay, details. Fine. So we tell are, us okay. exactly. No, I mean, you know, basically, we, we had we, you know, our key light ended up being this, you know, 14 by 14 softbox uh, with these dimmable um, LED tubes that we ended up dimming way down because, unfortunately, another hurdle that we had to get over was the wind was blowing, you know, really fast that night. So we ended up having to fly our our condor much lower than than we intended to. Uh, in the end, that was actually maybe a benefit because what that enabled me to do was dim these these lights down to a very low level. That definitely affected the quality of light in that scene and the way in which the light reflects off the cast faces and and things like this kind of created a tone that maybe was a little bit unexpected. So again, part of Moonlight and, and what you know I think Barry and I do really well is take take challenges and and and, and make them um, you know, work for us in, in a creative way. You try very hard to make sure you set up perspective in, uh, in the film. For example, when Chiron is walking through the bad neighborhoods and stuff, you shoot over his shoulder. Mm -hmm. I mean, we see the, him. So in other words, we're there in this ghetto, mm -hmm. li living this nightmare with him. Yeah, I mean, one of the main uh, concepts behind the film visually is to, was was the intention to make an, an incredibly immersive experience with a very a kind of like first person perspective. You know, the the, the sometimes you know we can sort of bring our cameras away from the action, get on a long lens and sort of, you know, find a close-up of someone. But we intended, you know, completely from start to finish to make sure that the distance between our characters and our, our, our subjects and our lenses were, 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 were one that created a very intimate experience. And so, yeah, for example, we're, we're following him down the street. We're, we're leading him. We're following. We're in the water, for example. We're not on the beach with a long lens shooting you know, far away. So all of these things sort of uh, were all, always about the concept of you know creating this this immersive sort of dreamlike uh, uh, feeling, and you had to make him sympathetic. You yeah. you could like a cynic that I am watch this film and uh, and think you know I'll just shut up, quit whining, kid. You know, <laughs> uh, but you 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 give him such humanity, and uh, it's it's a movie of not a lot of words. The script is very sparse. Mm -hmm. The story is very sparse, um, and so you've got a lot to do with your camera tricks to. <laughs> Yeah, the show. I mean, uh, to be fair, let's give credit a little bit to, to the cast and, and to the script and to the director because a lot of that comes from them. Uh, but my job was to make, again, going back to what you mentioned before, to make the camera feel like you are with him. Uh, you're, 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 you're seeing things from his perspective. You're experiencing things the way he's experiencing them. Again, not you know, removing ourselves from a conversation we're, when we're having a dinner, dinner table for a conversation, for example. You know, my camera is in the chair next to the cast, uh, or across the table from the cast, and so you're like another person at the table. And I think that kind of goes along with the concept of, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, being this, the, having this perspective that that you know, that is very first person. And I think that just that enables you to have that experience that is sympathetic when 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 you have the performances that you have, when you have the direction you have, when you have the editing you have. I think all those things go along with that concept. But I think we're all sort of working in tandem in that sense. I was at the Toronto Film Festival when this debuted and broke out and became this big hit with the critics in the industries early on in early September. So I saw what you must have experienced firsthand going, wow, this is, I can't believe this is happening. That's where the dream breaks out, right? Um, the, the movie came in second place for the Audience Award at the Toronto Film Festival. And the Audience Award usually tells award pundits like us, this is the best picture. I mean, Slumdog Millionaire won the uh, uh, audience award, for example, as did Argo. But El uh, La La Land seems to be that front runner now, that at least the early front runner, and it won the audience award at Toronto. But Moonlight came in second. 
And we heard on the street up there that it not only came in second, it did very, very well in the vote and almost beat La La Land. That's what a threat this movie is in the Oscar race. And this is powerful uh, evidence to us to take this movie seriously. You know, that said, it, th this movie has a almost perfect score at Metacritic. It's 99. You've got to go find the person who cheated you out of that last percentage. <laughs> uh, why? I think this audience is What is going there. on? Why do you think this movie is resonating this way? Uh, I think there's a variety of reasons. I mean, there's, there's a timing discussion. You could talk about the political, social climate. You could talk about, but I, I think the truth is, I think the movie really is a film that um, expresses the concept of being, you know, I think you know, the word other comes to mind, right? To, I, everyone is, at some point in their life has always felt like they didn't belong somewhere. Uh, at least I have, I'll, I'll say that myself. And um, I think this film really, you know, it, it, it states that experience very well. It's something I think whether we grew up in, for example, I'm from San Francisco, California, whether you grew up in San Francisco, whether you grew up in Massachusetts, whether you grew up in inner city Miami, whether you grew up in Texas, I think this is a feeling and, 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 a, and a concept that you know, is, is actually incredibly universal while at the same time telling a very specific story. And told very well. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks so much.